Hello again and thanks for staying with us. So today we're in conversation with legendary actor and director Tony Horoche. He's graced our screens for decades now, starring in productions including Imbeu, The Brave Ones, Gazlam and Zero Tolerance. He's also acted in numerous films including Lord of War, Blood Diamond and Invictus. Tony Horoche joining us in studio now. For more on what it takes to have traversed the journey you have, Welcome to the AM Report. It's great to see you, sir. Oh, thank you, man, and thank you for having me here. So, where do we begin when we start taking stock of the journey you've traveled so far? I'll begin here. I mean, we know typically when you get to your stature, there must have been many offers that come your way throughout the decades. Yeah. What kind of determines which of the roles you take up and which you, you kind of let pass? Well, I think it's, um, well, first of all, you, you just look at what the script has for you, and that will determine the kind of roles you want to play and how you want to be seen on screen and how you want to craft your career in terms of, you know, putting yourself locally, internationally, even continentally, right. you know. And then from then on, then you'll pick to say, okay, this kind of a script, this is the kind of a script that I can go with, this one I will not go with, and so on and so forth. Have any of them taken you by surprise during production where in between the shooting you think to yourself, hold on, this is not necessarily going the way I thought. Well, that happens. It yeah. happens a lot. Uh, but, you know, it depends, again, what kind of production you're in. And the producers and the directors, you know, to sit down with them and negotiate to say, okay, look, I thought we were going this direction. Why are we going here? Yeah. You know, then you start talking it out. And then it gives you actually um, even a better stand to, to, to determine or to take terms. Right. If, you know, if I can put it in that way. Sure. And I'm asking this because you, you've risen from the dead. <laughs> in, one of the, in one of the shows you've been a part of. And yeah. I think, look, there were other externalities, I understand, that mm -hmm. led to that particular arrangement. But that's certainly the kind of thing you wouldn't have necessarily predicted. Yeah. Um, how, what was your approach to that? Well, um, what happened is the production came with different ways of bringing this guy back. And on paper, it looked very believable. I don't know how you guys thought that I was reading from a dead because he was not quite dead. Right. Um, uh, so they took an element of some of the scenes where uh, I looked alive and to give, uh, you know, a hint that, you know, this guy is not dead. Uh -huh. But I think people out there and the audience, they just thought, that's it. We don't see him anymore. That's it. He's gone. Hold on. So you knew you were coming back? No, not uh, it was um, it, it's a contractual thing. Okay. You know, we got to a point where we were like, uh, am I, am I not, am I? While you're still thinking, let me just step off a bit. Let me just go do this one quickly. You'll tell me when you're done. Yeah. And then by the time they got to uh, bringing me back, they've already decided how they want to do it and why and so on. You know. It's interesting you mentioned uh, this idea of stepping back because, like I said, you wear many hats. You know, if you're not directing, there's training. I understand for. Um, acting as well. Yeah. I wonder to what extent you reckon that maketh an actor in this country, right? Being able to dabble in the different aspects of the production line, so to speak. Well, you know, it actually, it opens you up to a lot of things. And it also anchors you into the business of filmmaking. Because you understand every aspect of production that you know, if I mess up here, what's that going to do to other events in mm. that that are including production, you know. So it kind of like gives you the gravitas to be able to move into any direction and also thinking, putting on your business hat in terms of thinking, why am I moving here? If I'm messing up from maybe the editing suite, this is what I'm going to get, this is the final, you know, results that I'm going to get and that will result into, and that will mean that your production is crap or yeah. it's good, you know. So it kind of like helps when it comes to that. Sure. It helps a lot. Do you act with the edits in mind? And I, I know you know what I mean by that. Yeah. You know, like you, you understand, I know that it will help with this kind of cut. Is that even possible? Because I'm, I'm asking from... It is possible. It is possible. Uh, sometimes I would like to know what, what, what shot am I on? Am I on the medium shot or am I on a, am I on a close up? Yeah. Because that gives me an idea of the kind of performance I must deliver. It helps to know technical language and what shot gives you what mm. and how big can you go on what shot or how small can you go on right. on it you know so it kind of like gives you a way to also play around 
and be able to to become performance specific at that time yeah. and just deliver the right thing. And that's the stuff I understand you're very passionate about, actually, right? The craft of acting outside of perhaps what is a fringe benefit of many people watching what you do, which is probably the fame, maybe the money, is <laughs> um, but, you know, being able to get this right and honoring the moment, um, which, you know, has been a kind of conversation that's taken place sometimes in a very hostile way, I find, where mm -hmm. it seems that people who are being vilified because they're now in the industry. What's your take on, on how we just treating that when you consider even just you know the sustainability of the business you know um talking about that actually i'm just thinking i was also thinking about as i was driving here thinking you know uh the ai has also is coming in to revolutionize exactly. yeah. the, you know so basically that means by prompting something and just putting something typing a prompt on a computer it can give you whatever you want to have and i was thinking that what if it says Maybe if I can get a script and I'm given that it, a, a, a certain character, and then I prompted, I was like, just give me ways to, you know, what would that result into? And if I were to fight against it, what would I do? Hmm. What is it that would I, that I would bring onto the table to make to make people see that that's an AI person and this is the actor doing it? So I always think about those things and I play around. With, with those kind of ideas to say, you know, because it's just around the corner. People are going to be, you know, we act, probably even acting would be a thing of the past in the future. Really? You think so? Hey, do you see what those things are doing? Yeah, no, I've, I've heard, uh, I think it was on radio where there was one AI technology mimicking Kanye West singing in his own. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, th those type of things are there. So I always say, you know, it's better for an actor to equip themselves with such skill and have a library of things that they see around when they're at the parties, just have, take everything in. So when that day comes, even when the AI, whatever, is next to you, yeah. you actually outdo the AI machine. Sure. Yeah. Right. Speaking about having that library of tools, um, I've watched you act in Isuzulu and thought you from KZN. Um, I understand you're from Bloemfontein, so that's obviously not the case. But you've also been part of productions where Isindebel is yeah. the proper, predominantly spoken language. Uh, oh, yeah. I just, yeah, I just directed um, a show now. Yeah. It's a show on, on Zantamaj. Um, and, you know, it, and it's a beautiful thing to start tapping into different cultures and understanding how people do things differently and so on and so forth. And I think that's um, because acting is about life. It's about, you know, mimicking life. So you have to go, I, I find it very important to go into the pockets of different cultures, understanding different languages and how people do things, the traditions, why they do this, because that gives you also, becomes the library of, mm. of, of knowledge and it gives you that spark to try to tap into anything that you want to be able to produce what you want to do. Yeah, um, there are people who suggest the best actors are the best observers, you know, the people who are able to pay attention to detail yeah um be careful of that guy who's quiet in the room yes yeah, yeah. sitting there and watching <laughs> do you find you can never switch that off uh i no I, everywhere i go yeah. even looking at you now i'm thinking okay oh, the, <laughs> the next character is gonna be some <laughs> he's anchor guy <laughs> he's a good guy at home <laughs> despite everything but speaking about good guys look there's been um a lot of conversations about how specifically men have responded on set to certain things. I mean, you've been quoted as, as having spoken out about that yourself. Hmm. Um, and look, it's, I suppose, in some respects, just a symptom of the society that we live in. This is not an excuse, but perhaps just a diagnosis of how we got here. And I wonder, in your experience, whether you reckon there are specific things that need to be done to address this? Um, you know... Uh, this thing, it's, a, it, it's not a difficult thing. I think people are making it difficult. It's, it's just bringing how, and more especially from us, who, who come from, from, from the, the African upbringing, how do you respect Ubuntu? Yeah. You know, if you bring that, those values onto set, then we are okay. Mm. The values of Ubuntu on set talks about respect. I am because you are, I have to respect me as much as you have to respect me. You know, 
um, I have to make sure that you're happy on set. You have to make sure that I'm happy on set. So when all those things are leveled, then we, we don't have to go into those other, other things. The problem is that we try to take the outside values and try to make them our values. And when we bring them in there, with whatever new things that are happening today, um, then we trample on each other's foot. And when we do that, then that's when people start feeling offended. Then those people start feeling, it doesn't matter whether it's a female or male, you know. Hmm. What do you mean by outside values? Um, you know, we, 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 we have borrowed so much from the outside culture. There's pseudo-Americanism that we do, pseudo this and that. But um, if we think of ourselves as Africans and say, but Ekaya wouldn't do this. There's a way you speak to your mom, you know. And the way you speak to your mom, uh, you always, like I always say to people like, uh, I mean to my son, I always say, you need to speak to, the way you speak to your mom, when you meet a girl in the street, that's how you must speak to that girl. Mm. Immediately start changing tone and whatever. You disrespect it. You know? So I can't speak to someone on the street like I don't speak to my mom. If I speak to my mom in a certain way, every female person that I see, I just think, this is my mom. Right. Hi, how are you? And whatever. I know sometimes things get in the way, you know, anger and all those kind of things and whatever. But you try your level best just to stay to the values and making sure that you give that respect to everyone. And it just gives, um, it, it makes the place to be uh, well-spirited. Right. There's, there's, a, there's a good spirit that runs, you know. Even on productions, you see it all the time. When when. The, the, when the spirit is very tight in production, even here, when, when you work here, if you find your cameraman is a bit angry or whatever, you're going to get better shots, right? right? Yeah. yeah. But uh, if everybody is happy here, you know, and you greet everyone, you treat everyone with respect, you, you, you get the same kind of like feeling. The workflow also have the same spirit. So you carry the flow of goodness in everything. Yeah, there's certainly a synergy that comes with whatever kind of momentum you begin with. If it's on the wrong direction, that momentum is going to grow. Yeah. So yeah I, I get from one broadcaster to yeah. another. The comrades <laughs> like to say, the center does not hold. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> if the center does not hold. <laughs> there's certainly that, career, uh, that uh, idea. But do you reckon that's what's actually allowed you to stand the test of time, to use a cliche? You know, I, I, I honestly can't remember when I wasn't watching you at some stage. Um, I'm sure my mother feels the same way, and you're still going strong today. Um, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm human like anyone else, but I try my level best just to stay um, in the right direction. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I go off, and then I remember I have to remind myself that hey, you know, this is not how you started. That's not how you started. Right. Let's go back to the basics. Let's see what it is that made you to be that guy or that person or that character that you play. Why did you have those elements? Why did you have such chutzpah to push certain things into that, into that character? And you go back to it. And I think that's what kids me. Just to go back, just remembering who I am. Who am I? Why? Why am I here? Right. What's the purpose of me being here? What am I doing here? It makes me nervous sometimes, you know? Sometimes it makes you lose jobs, sometimes it makes you... But, you know, you have to stand by what you believe in and what you think you are. Mm. Yeah. And speaking about starting, is this what you had in mind? I mean, if you were to kind of take it back to, I don't know, your first gig on set, um, is Tony today the kind of person you were thinking about at that stage? Oh, my first gig on set was the craziest gig. I was playing... A I was an extra on Tarzan, on uh -huh. International. It was shot in, in Sun City. And I'm sure you can be Tarzan Walking today. around in an under, like <laughs> little... <laughs> no lines. Wow. That was my first gig. Sure. And then from then on, you know, I graduated into doing uh, SABC stuff, your Dark Angels. I remember back in the days. And quickly moved into Isidingo in those early days. Um, so from then, it was, I actually loved, I, I just wanted to be on set. Even on the days where I was not called to be on set, I just wanted to come and chill there and just watch, just watch people do their stuff, you know. 
This one I remember there was this American guy who was playing Tarzan. I used to watch him all the time. I follow, go behind the cameras, go behind the directors, just see what they're doing. So that's where the first laugh started, you know, in terms of engaging. Because I come from the theatre background, right? And coming on set, it was a different thing. It's something that I didn't even, uh, I didn't study, but I studied uh, performing arts. Very close, but not quite. Right. The other side is very technical, highly technical. And the other side is very performance-driven and very energy-driven. You know, um, so I had to also learn to differentiate between the two. Sure. Yeah. People will tell you though that theatre is probably the best teacher um, if you want to go into this kind of thing. Um, I, I don't know to what extent you agree with yeah. that. Yeah. Perhaps you do. Yeah. It's a contentious thing, so I know not all actors want to necessarily have a stance on it. It's not an easy. It's not an easy route to take. Yeah, and that's why most people won't do it. I think. Hmm. It's They're going to quote you. <laughs> it's, it's not an easy route to take. Because um, theatre, I take it like a, for me, I have to do at least two or three productions right. a year. Unfortunately, they keep on putting me like you must direct this one. So sometimes I want to be in the, I want to be on stage. Right. I just wanna. I just wanna act. You know. Um, the process of there, it's like you, you strengthening your muscle. Because everything that you do, it has to be bigger than life, yeah. but convincing. Hmm. So by the time I get on screen, it feels like nothing. Because <laughs> I come from there, and then I have to tone down to that level. And everything just becomes very... And to ignite, and to kick that... Uh, um, what do we, we, that, 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 that thing inside, the, the fire that is burning inside, the acting fire that is burning inside. When you come from theater, it's very, it takes me, like, literally, after I have done a theater piece and I go straight into film, to kick that thing, it takes me less than 30 seconds. Wow. I still get nervous. Sure. Up until this day, I still get butterflies when I get on, on set. But that, <coughs> it just been made possible by, by okay, theater sorry. training, yeah. Sure. And we hope that fire never dies. I mean, you're as compelling sitting in front of me as you are in all the characters you've portrayed over the years. Thank you so much for popping back. Well, I think appreciate much. the catch up, uh, one of the decade, I imagine, <laughs> given the yeah. fact that we don't see you in the space very often. But uh, thanks for honoring our invite. It's been lovely right. having you. Thank you very much, and thank you for having me. All right. Tony Kharoche, an internationally acclaimed actor there on what it takes to be going for decades as strongly as he has in what he does. There's plenty